Hi guys, this is Jason here from Nathaniel. In this lesson, we are going to continue our study of 16th notes by looking at a pattern which you can play in the bass hand or the left hand, a chord pattern basically over 16th notes. And then the right hand is going to essentially hold a steady pulse or just hold a very nice colorful voicing of the respective chords which we've chosen from the exercise. So if you've heard in the intro video, the chords are quite colorful, right? There are these colorful major seventh chords, some ninths and then minor sevens and then like that chord that's a nice ninth so um, we're going to learn a few things about these extended chords or colorful chords if you will uh, but the main point of the lesson is to cover the interaction between the two hands or rather the independence between the two hands if you look at it that way wherein the right hand is going to do something very machine like or engine like while the left hand in this exercise is the creative hand now we've done quite a few exercises on 16 node independence where in some instances the left hand is the pulse where the left hand plays something very um, machine-like and the right hand does something on a pattern. But in this exercise, the left hand is going to do a pattern and the right hand is going to hold the pulse. So let's start with the left hand now and then move to the right hand. The left hand is going to do all the, all the chords mentioned in a very spread way, in a spread voicing environment as I call it. So what happens with spread voicing is the first chord for instance is E flat major. So the way it's played is pretty much like how it's voiced on a, on, a, on a guitar or more specifically a bass, you know, where the frequencies are too close to each other for the notes to be played like a normal piano triad, in this case, E, G, B flat. So to make the triad shine, cut through, as well as bring out the bass, sometimes we then say, oh, it sounds too muddy. So let me move it a bit higher but then that ruins the bass so why not have both a non-muddy sound and a sound where the bass really comes out and you get that booming piano bass so uh, how we voice it very quickly in the left hand would be take the third of the E first chord which is E flat major okay I will tell you the other chord shortly so this is the first chord instead of playing the G here I take it to the top octave and play it above the E flat octave. That's what we call the 10th interval, right? So there are pretty much just three chords in this exercise. The first chord is E flat major, which I just showed you. The second chord, let's figure out how to play that. That's an F minor, which again sounds a bit muddy as you can hear probably. So. That's how I'm voicing it in the left hand. Do, 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 that's F, C, A flat. What is the first chord again? E flat, B flat, G. So for the first bar, you're going to pretty much have that. And then next bar. Do, 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 do. That's F minor seventh or F minor for now. So I'd first encourage you to toggle between these two versions. Spread voicing, if you will, of the triad. On its own, it just sounds quite nice, right? Right? So the chord progression basically is that, but at the end I've added an interesting chord which will come to life once I bring in the right hand voicing as well to play some blocks within the left hand. So the left hand again, let's finish it off. E flat, G, e flat major, then you go F minor, F minor, then come back to E flat major for the third bar and then you go F minor for half of the fourth bar and then you do like a B flat sus4 or add with an add 9 so that's B flat F C okay I'm not doing normal B flat major it sounds a bit more colorful okay guys so you have 
E flat major in spread first bar so you can go start with eighth notes 3 and 4 and 1 okay that's E flat again E flat 3 and 4 and F minor 3 and 4 and back to E flat major and now F minor B flat 9 sus 4 Okay, so it's F minor, B flat, F minor, B flat, F C. Okay. Get used to your fingers. Generally, the pinky will obviously start off each voicing. You have to put your thumb at the top because this is quite a stretch, isn't it? So. You'll have to put your pinky and your thumb there, and now the middle one can either be the index finger, but if you feel that there's too much of a stretch, you can decide between the middle finger being the actual middle finger, which is that of course, or the index finger. In this case, this is really too much of a stretch. So depending chord by chord. You have to decide which finger is going to go in the middle. In this case, the middle finger for F minor. I think the index finger works well there. I mean, middle finger is a bit too big for me, so I do the index there. I'm also holding the pedal so that the sound rings and it doesn't sound choppy since you're lifting your pinky off the uh, off the E flat, right, of or the first root. So E flat, F minor, E flat major, F minor, B flat suspended. So I'm using my, I think the index finger works really great. And then come back. So those are about the fingers. Those are about the voicings or the shapes of these respective chords used in the lesson. Now I did not play this that way in the performance video at the beginning, right? I did something like this. Right. So this is engaging with the 16th note vibe which we've been doing all through this 16th note independent series which which we ended up going like pom 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 so i'm counting actually e's and a's in between the and so that's one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a. so my entire grid is set up like this and then i'm playing my notes at specific points on the 16th note grid right and you need to do this within the grid then your timing really gets rock solid even if you're an intermediate player who's played for a few years you may get it by feel or by vibe if you will a lot of musicians get that but i think if you follow people like your drummer or if you follow other members of your group or if you just feel it by by listening and then getting it may not be perfect right unless you've perhaps heard a lot of music in this genre maybe then you will get it but then you still have to get it with some things like the metronome you have to get it into a studio to record your performance so these things may not be that easy so it's always good to get the time internally within so that's where you can help yourself by counting 1e and a 2e and a 3e and a keep that going for a while 4e and a 1e and a 2 Now let me sing the bass line and then try and play it for you as well okay the bass line is pom 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 okay it's going at all those 16th note divisions if you will so let me now play that it's very tough to count it and play so you just have to get the hit points right i've put it out there for you to see so <clears throat> first chord e flat major this is how it goes 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 
bit tricky, right, to get it with the voice. But anyway, that's not the end goal. The end goal is to do it on the keyboard. So that's your pattern for pretty much all the chords. So what do we have again? Okay, one E and a two E and a. Okay, one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. Those are your hit points. The intervals you're playing within these hit patterns are one five three one five three five one five three one five three five one. By three, I mean the tenth or the uh, octave of the three. Okay, and it follows on those hits. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a right and a two E and a three. And a four E and a one. Okay, the other chords: F minor, E flat major, F minor, B flat, back to E flat. Cycles: F minor, E flat major, F minor, boom. So that's pretty much about your left hand. Let's now move on to the right hand, where you're going to discover a few interesting voicings of the chord to make it a bit more colorful, as we say, extended harmony. And we'll also try and bring in the pulse amidst all of this left hand chaos. Moving on. So for the E flat chord in the left, which you're playing pretty much as a triad, I'm trying to add some color in the right by actually playing. What's finishing off as the E flat major seventh chord, but without the need of playing the E flat, because E flat is already played in the bass, and that is the root of the chord, which is which is supposed to be played in the bass. So why do the E flat there? It makes it a bit tricky for the hand. Why play four notes when you can just play three, and it also sounds clean. So you can play E flat major like this. Create the overall product ends up being an E flat major seventh. Another great way to look at this equation is play E flat in the bass and play a G minor in the right hand, and together it's exactly an E flat major seventh chord. Those are the four notes: one here and three there. In this case, I'm playing all the three notes of the chord here in spread, and I'm just keeping it. As a triad in my right hand, G minor over E flat. You can also call it G minor slash E flat. That will become like a slash chord. Okay, first chord playing like that. Then F minor. Again, I'm converting the F minor into an F minor seventh. How did I do that? I'm playing A flat major triad. That that's the upper extension of the F. So. A flat, C, E flat. So so far we've got ourselves two chords. You can just hold it for now. E flat, A flat, with F in the bass. Overall package is F minor seventh, E flat major seventh, F minor seventh. Now come back to E flat major seventh, or else you could even add up. An E flat major seventh plus nine, or E flat major ninth, which is that F there that adds a lot of color. So E flat thus can be played in two ways: G B flat D in the right hand, or B flat D F. That's a B flat triad over the same bass spread voicing. So that way. So maybe the first E flat I'll play with G B flat D. The second one, which is actually at the third bar, I'll play it with B flat D F. That voicing. So an F minor, A flat there. Okay, in the top end. So all the chords E flat, F minor, E flat with the nine, F. And now I'm ending with that interesting chord we discovered in the left hand earlier. That's B flat, the sus chord here, 
the B flat sus chord that's B flat with the fifth and the ninth over here and what do we do here we play the same A flat major chord which we used over the F minor which works perfect for that B flat ninth sus four chord but I like to play it with another inversion maybe this version just adds a different vibe so F minor seventh you play like this with A flat at the top end and uh, the B flat uh, sus nine chord you play this way it's a really nice dominant resolution back to E flat major seventh in fact without the rhythm itself it sounds quite cool now coming back to the groove so let's just play the left hand on the 16th note pattern that is and then we vibe in with the right hand just holding the chords for now e flat f minor e flat with the ninth f minor b flat e flat remember the last f minor and b flat are played for half the bar so that is already quite a workout if you ask me but to add to this if you really can you could work on generating the pulse in the right hand while you do this crazy 16th note pattern in the left hand so the right hand you could just start by maybe just playing the root or the sa of the scale which is e flat and just see how it goes you know just one note one 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 sounds good with and without the pedal now you know when you just play the pulse and this is already so much of groove happening that it actually sounds nice with the pedal as well as without it you know this is without with Okay and now of course we don't want to just end our journey by playing a single E flat we want to play the voicings which we learned a very short time ago so E flat F minor 7th back to E flat with the 9th if you can F minor 7th and then ending with that B flat 9 chord sus 4 Okay. Ti do re la da re le do re. Okay. La da re and then la da re da re da. Okay. And now we need to play this as a pulse. So bam to 3 4 change 2 3 four change two three four one two and back okay and then of course we somehow have to get that left hand pattern with the right hand let's see how it goes
that's the interaction or that's the involvement between your two hands generally what happens in independence whenever you work on it you are always thinking like a drummer a drummer will always have something consistent going on like the kick drum in the case of a dance song will always go doop 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 and then you have the groove around the kick or else in a normal drum groove you'll at least have the ride or the hi hat doing the pulse or the time feel right it'll go tang tang or or whatever it may be the drummer is always giving you a groove element or a pattern as well as the pulse right otherwise how do you feel anything you have to you have to at least send the pulse across to the audience they have no clue about this pattern right this is just groovy it's just nice and groovy but then if they don't feel the pulse how are they going to get up and do anything you know you want them to dance don't you right so in the right hand you eventually build towards the pulse i understand it'll be tough initially because you still have to get acquainted with the left hand doing spread voicing in that uh, 16 note groove which we discussed and then you have to work towards the right hand eventually playing the pulse starting off of course with just holding the chords right and it goes on Right guys so let's just quickly conclude what we've done we have a four chord sequence over four bars or rather maybe five chords if you add the turn around chord so you have e flat major 7th your first chord played spread voicings always in the bass and you're playing these upper triads in the right hand which shows off the color of the triad in this case the major 7th then the next chord was f minor 7th spread f minor 7th with the upper extension a flat major i'm trying there and then come back to e flat major 7th or else you could even do the b flat on top giving you that ninth flavor and then back to f minor 7th but then in order to do something interesting at the end we then add it along with the b flat ninth chord sus 4 which is that e flat and it goes on and your goal or mission rather should be to play that interesting 16th note pattern which we've discussed all through the lesson in your left and your right hand will hold those chords and try your best to play it along with the pulse and bring in all the dynamics and all the other flavor as well don't just end by getting the maths between the two, two hands try to ultimately make some nice music eventually with a lot of purpose and a lot of feeling and a lot of dynamics so yes you need to practice this one as hard as you can and do send it to me once you've got it i'll be happy to hear it and get back to you with my feedback as well for sure so how i've normally concluded these 16th note lessons is to just play the whole thing really slow for you to just digest and hear and really nail okay remember play it with a 16th note feel one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and or all by now i guess you've got the the general flow of this exercise eventually do it to a metronome which is about 104 to 110 beats per minute 110 will be awesome if you can play to to that speed and that's about it thanks again for tuning in to this lesson and don't forget to subscribe to our youtube channel if you haven't already follow us on instagram Uh, you could also support us on patreon where all my handwritten notes are there for pretty much all the exercises we will ever do on youtube and have done in the past so patreon is an awesome resource if you could consider it and i will catch you in the next one cheers so let's get to the slow version